In today's video, I want to talk about a race that I attempted to do 10 years ago. <laughs> and the reason it's come is because Facebook notified me of memories from 10 years ago, and this was something that popped up in my feed. So I thought I'd share my experience with what's called the Canadian death race. Now in a word, the Canadian death race is hard, very, very hard. The race is 125 kilometers through the Canadian Rockies in Grand Cache, Alberta. This race consists of five legs, uh, and I'll get into that a little bit later on. It has three mountain summits, a river crossing, and there's about 17,000 feet of elevation change in this race. This race is limited to about a thousand people and they reserve about a third of those numbers to people who want to do it solo because typically people are doing it in a relay. As I mentioned, there's five legs to this race. So typically a team is going to be made up of five people. And one thing too, for each leg, there's a time cutoff. If you don't make the time cutoff, you cannot continue going on through to the rest of the race. One of the reasons for this is safety. It's, it's a small race. They don't have a lot of volunteers. You're in the mountains. There's grizzly bears. There's other animals. So a lot of it is for safety, especially when it comes to the nighttime running. Back in 2013, I was on a business trip out east. And normally when I go on business trips, if I'm there for a weekend, I'll join up with the, the local running room. And I did that this week particular weekend, I started chatting with one of the lady runners and she was telling me about this race that she had done it as part of a relay. And I'm like, Oh, that sounds really interesting. Now she didn't really get into the difficulties of the race or what the legs were like, but I got to thinking I needed another running challenge at this point. And I thought, let me do a little bit of research on this race. And perhaps it's something I would do. It sounded like it would be very challenging, especially as I was going to do it solo. I started looking around for information. I looked at the website. I gave you information about the race, but sometimes to me, numbers don't, I, I can't really comprehend. Like you're telling me 17,000 feet of elevation. Well, where I live, I don't have elevation like that. So I don't really know what that looks like, but more, I was looking for pictures of the race and I couldn't really find anything at that point on the website. So I went looking, maybe there was a book and I found this, it's called Conquering the Canadian Death Race. Now you can see here, there's a picture of the trail or of a trail supposedly on the race. And I thought, okay, that doesn't look so bad. Even if you're going up or down, the trail looks like it's easily runnable. And I thought, okay, you know what? I'm going to sign up. I'm going to sign up and I'm going to train my heart out for this. And I'm going to train on trails here in Ottawa. I'm not a trail runner. I actually don't enjoy running trails because every time it seems I've run a trail, I end up tripping on the roots and I get all banged up and bloodied knees and what have you. I thought, you know what? It's a challenge. I'm, I, I'm up for this. I'm going to, I'm going to give up my best shot and see what happens. So when it came to training, I, I thought I'm going to start in January, but January's winter here. We have a lot of snow. So the trails are in the Gatineau park, but in the winter time, it's more or less reserved for if you're on your snowshoes or if you're skiing, you really can't run. And I'm not a snowshoe runner, so I just kept stayed on the roads. So January to March, my long run would be between 20 and 30 kilometers. So I was building my base during those first three months. Then uh, come April, I thought I should go down to Lake Placid. They've got some of the Adirondack Mountains down there and I'll do a couple of runs down there in the mountains. Well, I went down in April and nothing was open at the time. I get, I don't know, I didn't even think that they wouldn't be open because the trails were opening up here. I thought, well, they should be good down there. Anyways, it wasn't a waste of a weekend. I still did a lot of running while I was there. Now I'm getting into the April to July time frame where the bulk of the training was. So I now I was doing one long run, but I was also doing another maybe 
half distance long run and then some shorter ones. So my weekly mileage was between 80 to maybe 125 kilometers during that uh, time. And I was on the trails a lot here in the Gatineau Park. I decided in June that I would go back to Lake Placid and now everything was open. Mount Marcy, based on what I had read, was one of the highest peaks. And so I went and did that. That was more of a walk run because there was a lot of rocks and and kind of like jumping between rocks. And I mean, my abilities are not that great. I did what I could. I did a lot of it was running, but a lot of it was walking as well. But I felt really good doing that. That kind of gave me a little bit of a boost, uh, just, you know, different terrain and um, different training environment. Um, it was beginning of August and race day. It was a beautiful day, sunny, blue skies except it was really hot. It was like 30 degrees plus more with the humidity, extremely hot, but I felt good. I didn't know how well I would do or not do, but I felt good. A bit scared because I didn't know what to expect. The first leg, oh, I thought this is great. <laughs> like if the, if the whole course is like this, okay, I can do this. It was a fairly nice run going through that first leg. So I finished that. Then I started leg two. Now this leg is uh, a 27 kilometer leg and they, a lot of people say this is really the hardest leg of all. Right from the get go, we're going straight up it seemed. I had to walk, I, I couldn't run. I had to use my walking poles and then you climbing, climbing, climbing. And then, oh, you think, okay, it's gonna be great going down. Well, no, the downhill was scary. <laughs> very, very scary. I mean, I, I would slide down on my bum and parts because to me it was treacherous. You can see in this picture, gives you an idea of what the steepness of the trails are. We had just gone up Mount Flood and gone down Mount Flood and then gone up Mount Grand. The descent on Mount Grand was just waiting for us a couple of minutes away. Anyways, I was standing at uh, the top of this and there was a fellow standing beside me. His name was Addison Hagen and we we're both like just looking and he, he took a picture and I said, can I give you my email and maybe you can send me that picture after because no one's going to believe me how steep this was. And we were both talking about that and I'm like, if I saw a picture like this when I first signed up, I'm not sure I would have signed up because I would have said, oh, that's a little beyond my capability. Anyways, we took the picture, chatted a bit, and then went on our way down, and again, kind of on my bum going down, and then got into the end of leg two. And, and I have to say, it was hot. I cramped so badly on one of the uphills. Like I'd never cramped in my life. I was drinking electrolytes. I had like two liters on my back. I had two water bottles in the pouches of my pack. And they were Gatorade, so they had electrolytes in them. I just started cramping and I literally couldn't move. Literally stuck to the ground. I had people pass and say, are you okay? And I'm like, yep, I'm just gonna take my electrolytes and they're like, good, I'm glad you have some. Uh, otherwise I have some, you know, they were very, very kind and helpful. And luckily I was very close to the aid station as well. So I got my electrolytes, the pills in and was able to refill water. It was like magic. <laughs> the cramping went away. It just went completely away. So I was able to continue on with, with, the, with the, the race. And at any rate, I finished leg two, but now I look at my time and I realize that I won't make the cutoff for leg three. There's absolutely no way I would make the cutoff. So I could either end my day or I could see how far I could get. And that's what I decided to do. I decided to continue with leg three and it was way better than leg two. It was still difficult, but way better. Like, I was able to at least do some running in this leg. But yeah, uh, I was a couple of kilometers away from the checkpoint and one of the race vehicles came up and said, I'm sorry, you haven't made the checkpoint. I'm gonna have to call it a day. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, fair enough. I understand, I understand what it's like when we have checkpoints. You have to respect that. And you know that, you fully know that when you go into the race that if you don't make it, well, 
you're not gonna argue about it or cry about it. It's like, yeah, that's, this is the day I had. I have to say that I'm very proud of myself for having signed up, for having trained, for having gotten myself to the start line doing something that was way, way out of my comfort zone. Like I mentioned earlier, trail running is not something I love to do. So this was out of the comfort zone, but I'm very, very proud of myself for doing that. When I finished that race, I was like, yep, I've done it. I tried it, did my best. I, I did my best. I worked hard on my training. I trained uh, for almost eight months. And I thought it was great. I gave it my all, but I had absolutely no desire to want to go back and try to finish that race. I know had there been no checkpoints, I could have finished the race. And I know that because I have run Comrades Marathon, which is 90 kilometers, an extremely hilly course, hardly any flat in there. And I've done a hundred mile run on a flat course, but I've done the distances in my past. So I just knew in my head I could have done it and I would have done it had there been no checkpoints, but there were, and that's just, you take what the day gives you. I really like this quote, and this puts it all in perspective. It's Theodore Roosevelt. And he said, it's hard to fail, but it's worse never to have tried to succeed, right? It's hard to fail, but at least I had the courage to try and succeed in this race. If you've ever done this Canadian death race or a race like that, I'd love to hear your story. Uh, I, I think it's always fascinating to hear what people have done, how they've trained, some of the feats that they've, they've taken. I hope you enjoyed the video. I plan to do some more of my little race stories. Uh, I've done a lot of running in my past and I've done, I think, some memorable races that if you're a runner, you may find interesting and if you're not a runner, maybe you'll feel energized or motivated to start running because it all starts with one step and then it's amazing what you can do. You take care and I'll see you in the next video.